Um, the first thing I'm going to do with um, Tom tonight is we're just going to go through a little bit of resisted movements. One of the, my favourite um, assessment tools was, is going to be just getting the knee up into a, a little bit of flexion and then getting him to push his heel into the, um, into the table, push away, and obviously seeing if that reproduces any of his pain. And then we can just sort of increase the flexion as we go along, go along like so, and then so on and so on. But usually you'll find if you can bring the knee out as wide as you can, obviously he's a little bit long for this, and pressing down, you usually should be able to indicate exactly where they're getting that, um, that local pathology or lesion. Um, the other one that we can also do is um, just putting the hamstring on a stretch. That, that is actually a ripper, and my go-to is always probably the bent knee, probably with a little bit of extra hip flexion and then just taking up into range and then seeing if there's any pain on that. And then they can resist as well. Push down and relax. Once again, just isolating where that, uh, where that pathology is. So, Steve, are you looking, um, <coughs> Danny, are you looking for pain or range of motion or both? No, no good question, Steve. Um, I'm actually looking for pain. That's, I'm, I'm wanting to reproduce their symptoms. So my assessment is always about reproducing their symptoms. Um, range is important, there's no doubt about it, and I can go through their range and so forth, but if they're coming in with that hamstring pain, I wanna be able to reproduce it so I know, okay, yeah, it's locally, that's where it's sore, and that's reproducing the pain. Um, I mean, you can get your clients and doing bridges, if you like. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna do it in this situation here because we just don't have the, you know, the, the platform, or you could probably do it off a weight bench off there. So start them off with a double bridge, see if they do that, and then move them onto a single bridge, and then you can you work out from there whether or not, you know, it's obviously been, you know, the local pathology. But like I said, the subjective assessment should marry up with your objective. Um, the next one for me, really what I do is, and, and this is more related to just hip range, I'm just wanting to know what their the hip range movement is, and especially more just internal and probably external rotation, and a little bit of just their hip flexion and whether or not that's restricted from one side to the other. Because once again, the hip plays a really big role in what's happening at the hamstring. Sometimes the hamstring can be a bit of a tensional barometer for what's going on on the hip sometimes, or for the lower back for that reason. So once we've isolated that, we've done that. Normally what I do if I get a positive on that, I would turn Tom over. I'll get, actually, do you mind turning over for us, Tom? And then I'll just really just go through some palpation. I mean, the greatest tool I have sometimes in terms of assessment is just palpation. Um, so probably the first thing I'm gonna do if I'm looking for a local pathology is I'm gonna probably see if there's any bruising or swelling. Once again, that'll be that'll be uh, marry up with obviously the, um, the subjective assessment. But just starting basically at, right at the top at the hamstring tendon, if you have problems finding that hamstring tendon, I just get them into a bit of resisted flexion, push up against me, Tom, and it should pop right up underneath your fingers and relax. So Tom's got a really healthy hamstring group here, even for a cyclist, <laughs> but just pushing over the hamstring tendon itself. Once again, if you're trying to work out exactly where their pain is, it once again, is it, is it more tendon related? Is it distal to the musculotendinous junction? Because we know that's where most of the musculotendon and junction tears will be. They'll either be distal to the musculotendinous junction proximally, or they may even be down um, distally here, so they'll be up in this region here. Even though clinically, we tend to see a lot of the muscle belly tears um, sort of in the more mid to lower portion there. And that's probably more to do with maybe some of those more severe tears, the intramuscular tendon. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about that later on. So palpation, 